You called me out upon the waters The great unknown Where fear may fail And there I find you in the mystery In oceans deep My faith will stay
rest in your embrace I am yours And you are mine. Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to our service of morning worship from Christchurch Billericay on Sunday the 22nd of August. Today is the fifth in our series of caring for God's creation and today the title is On the Tiles. All will become clear when Paul Hunt preaches later on. As we've progressed through this series the news on the effects of climate change has become very worrying indeed. There have been many severe floods and the forest fires across Europe and in America are burning out of control. We also know that the highest temperature ever recorded in Europe was recorded just a couple of weeks ago at 48.8 degrees. When we first started talking about this series a few months ago, we obviously had no idea how serious things would become. So I hope as this series progresses, you will be helped and uh, be able to think a little bit more about how you can play your part to help caring for God's creation even more than you have been perhaps in the past. We're now going to watch a short video about what's happening to our oceans and after that I will begin the service. What if you had a crystal ball? And that crystal ball showed you exactly what the oceans and the world would look like in a future affected by climate change. What if you could go inside that crystal ball to experience it for yourself? Would you care more then? Virtual reality is at a tipping point. Now anyone with a smartphone can be transported through VR to just about anywhere. Like the reefs of Ischia, an island off the coast of Naples, Italy. From above, these island reefs look normal. But underneath the ocean's surface, scientists have made a breakthrough discovery about how climate change is rapidly affecting marine life. I'm Fiu Michele, I'm a marine biologist at Hopkins Marine Station in Monterey Bay. I study ocean acidification, the increasing acidity of the oceans as they uptake carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. We're underwater in the Ischia reefs. What makes these reefs special is that there are natural underwater volcanic vents that spew pure carbon dioxide into the water, making it more acidic. About 30% of the carbon dioxide from human activity dissolves into the oceans, rivers and lakes. This, in turn, makes it difficult for organisms like plankton, corals and shellfish to grow their skeletons and shells. Virtual reality allows for unique, teachable moments that would be impossible in other learning settings. Look around and find the healthy reef with normal, non-acidic seawater chemistry. In this blue, healthy reef, you can see many schools of fish and colorful coral on the rocks. 
Now, turn all the way around and look for the murky brown volcanic vents spewing carbon. This is what an unhealthy reef with higher acidity looks like. The diversity of life has dropped, many animal species are gone, and a few types of algae have taken over. Major impacts are already anticipated for the end of this century, and they will continue to worsen after that. If carbon emissions aren't slowed, oceans will eventually all look like what scientists call the ocean moonscape. One of the most difficult parts of my research is getting people to care about ocean acidification. When people experience the future impact of climate change for themselves, alongside a scientific expert like Dr. McKelly, it becomes easier to understand the crisis. Researchers can't bring all of the world to the reefs of Ischia, but through virtual reality, they can bring the crystal ball of Ischia to the world. So that video was just a little bit about what's happening to part of our oceans. It is worrying, but there's always some good news as well. So let's not be too downhearted. Let's just take a moment to be quiet as we begin our service. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so we come to our time of confession. Let's just take a moment to reflect on our week. Is there something we want to bring before the Lord this morning to say we're sorry? O oh God, your fertile earth is slowly being stripped of its riches. Open our eyes to see. O oh God, your clear air is slowly being filled with pollution. Open our eyes to see. God, our maker, so move us by the wonder of your creation that we may repent and care more deeply. So move us to grieve the loss of life, that we learn to cherish and protect your world. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now Stuart Gibbs is going to bring us our Bible reading 
after which Paul Hunt will be speaking. Today's New Testament reading is Mark 4, 37 to 41. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we see the world around us grow increasingly hotter. The winds and storms becoming more violent and the future uncertain. Please, Lord, we pray that you will calm our hearts and guide our actions to reduce the damage we have done to your creation. Amen. So, good morning Christchurch. Today's reading focuses on an event on the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus once again showed his power over nature. But also, it highlights our ability to lose faith just when we need it the most. So, let's re revisit that night. I can still see Jesus. I think he's sleeping. Can you believe that? Sleeping in this storm? Now, I'm a fisherman by trade and I'm used to the waters around these parts. But my, is it stormy tonight? I mean, normally we wouldn't be sailing in conditions like that, would we? No, we wouldn't. But when we saw Jesus and his disciples taking a boat earlier tonight across the waters we just had to follow didn't we we just had to it was jesus i mean after all we wanted to hear what he was saying we wanted to be near him but as i'm on the boat now with the waves crashing around me and the wind oh my word the wind i'm now thinking was that a silly idea what were we thinking i mean following jesus out into the sea in a storm with these waves these this wind what were we thinking and let's face it we still don't know for sure who jesus is do we i mean yes we've heard the stories and the miracles that jesus has performed and that he is the son of god but well i, I, I just don't know i just don't know i mean if he were the son of god then surely he'd be doing something about this storm wouldn't he I mean, it's dangerous being out here. Uh, I mean, I'm getting really worried. I mean, we could all die. I mean, I mean, should we turn back? What, what do you reckon? Should we, should we try and turn back? Y yeah, I mean, I think so. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What can I, what can I see over there? Is it? Yeah, I can see movement in the boat that's got Jesus in it. Yeah, his disciples, they're, 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 they're running around. They're trying to wake him up, I think. Um, I can see them saying something to Jesus. I mean, I can't hear what they're saying. I mean, the wind is too strong and the waves are just pounding. They're just crashing all around us. But but I can, I can see them talking really, really, uh, really to Jesus. And and Jesus is saying something to him, as uh, to them as well. It, it, it looks... Is, it, is that Jesus standing up? Yeah, I, f I think it is. Is it? Is it? Yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, he's, he's got his arms wide out like this, and I can see him. I can see him saying something, but I, I can't hear what it is. I can't hear. But oh, can, have you just know what's just happened? Did you see what I saw? Did, did you did you see that too? Yeah, the wind it, it's, it's just gone. It's it's just completely stopped. And the waves too. It's where have they gone? It's it's it's, it's like really calm. Look, one one second the storm was raging, 
Uh, and the next, it, whoa, Jesus stood up and he said something and, and everything was just calm. It, 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 can you believe that? Did you see that? I'm not making it up, am I? Did you see that? Wow. I mean, wow. I mean, I saw Jesus and, and he stood up and he, and he held his hands up. And, and he said something, and, and then there was just silence. There was just, wow. I mean, there's, there's no storm. It, it's just gone. There's literally just no storm around. Wow. It's so quiet now. I can actually hear Jesus in, in, in that calm, gentle, authoritative voice of his. And what, what, is, what is he saying? Yeah, he's, he's saying, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Was that was that to me? Was that was that was that to his disciples? Who was he saying that to? I think it was his, to his disciples, but it also felt like it was to me. I felt like Jesus was speaking directly to me. And why did I not have faith? Why did I not have faith in him? Why did I question who he was? Why did I suggest that we turn away? Do you feel like that too? Yeah. I, I do have faith, Lord. I mean, I do. I, I don't know why I didn't, but I do have faith, Lord. I do. Now, today's reading reminds us that Jesus... He's here. He's here to calm our hearts in times of need. But I think also the reading also serves to remind us that we will face difficult times in our lives. And it will sometimes be a challenge to, to keep our faith in Jesus, just like those first disciples did on the boats when everything was going around them and that storm was raging. They were worried. They were looking at Jesus for help, but they also were if you like panicking that, that he wouldn't be doing something and i think that uh, reading reminds us that we do need to remain faithful in the knowledge that jesus is here in our hearts to guide us to comfort us and to strengthen us when we need it the most so today's activity time focuses on the use of tiles that you may have left over now, I'm not sure why I keep tiles, um, perhaps in the case that uh, one on the wall will crack and I need to replace it. Uh, however, um, I don't really have the DIY skills to remove one tile and replace it with another, no doubt. Um, and you're probably also wondering why tiles? How does that relate to the Bible reading today? Well, as some of you might know, of course, the link is that in ancient times, tiles were first created from the mud and clay from the riverbanks. And of course, we had the story today of Jesus on a sea, the Sea of Galilee. Now, if you've got any spare tiles around, why not try to create a coaster? So you might uh, leave, uh, you might put a, uh, a teapot on there, or you might put uh, a cup of tea on there as well. And if you've got uh, some spare tiles, like the ones that uh, you can see on the screen, uh, all you need is some pens, like Sharpie pens, uh, some permanent pens or some acrylic pens, uh, if you want to uh, get a little bit more artistic. And they come in all different uh, colours. And then try to get uh, creative. So by perhaps writing out a Bible first, uh, or even maybe drawing some pictures uh, of the scene that we heard today, or maybe some shape, something very abstract that just reminds you whenever you see it of today's reading and perhaps the feelings that that reading has uh, brought up in you. So we would love to see your um, your tiles. So if you uh, do create any wonderful work uh, creations with your uh, spare tiles, uh, then uh, please do uh, take a uh, photo and email them to Margaret and uh, we'll collect those so we can get a real sense of what our uh, church community are doing uh, to try and reuse, reduce and recycle. Have a great rest of the week.
unfold your sovereign plan. Raise up a chosen generation that will march through the land. All of creation is longing for your unveiling of power. Would you release your anointing? Oh God, let this be the hour. Let your glory fall in this room. Let it go. your fragrance rest in this place as we gather to seek your face. Ruler of the nation, the world has yet to see. The church in victory Turn to us, Lord, and touch us Make us strong in your mind Overcome our weakness That we Thank you very much, Paul, for your talk, which 
as always, is really practical and helpful. And wasn't that a lovely worship song, Father of all creation? We're now going to stand, if you would like to, to affirm our faith together in the Father of creation. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now John Friend is going to lead us in our prayers. Thank you, Lord, that despite not being able physically to be together to worship, whether we are in church, at home or elsewhere, through the tools of modern science, it is possible to share a service at the same time. And while we are together, let us begin our prayers during a few moments of silence by bringing before God those who are bereaved, those worrying over relatives and friends, those who are ill and those who have other problems. Let us not forget our mission partners who frequently endure a difficult life trying to spread your word. Our Father, we pray you will hear our prayers and give those who are troubled peace in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we sometimes forget that you are the source of all goodness generosity and love. We thank you for opening the hearts of many to those who, due to war, conflicts, religious intolerance and any reason, are fleeing for their lives. Help us now to open our arms in welcome and find ways of reaching out our hands in support that the desperate may find new hope and lives torn apart may know your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In line with the Church's summer theme, Caring for Our Creation, we pray. God of compassion, as when the disciples who called out for help when their boat was in danger of sinking, you hear the cries of all who are in trouble or distress. Accept our prayers for those whose lives are affected by storms, floods and fires. Strengthen them in their hour of need. Grant them perseverance and courage to face the future and be to them a firm foundation on which to rebuild their lives. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. A prayer from Nigeria. Lord Jesus, we are breaking the world you created and it's causing suffering all around us. The poor and vulnerable amongst us feel the most impact. Forgive us where we have ignored their plight. Forgive us for the way we have treated creation, your creation. Today we set our hearts and minds on you. Give us your vision to inspire us to live more justly in order to bring your restoration to this earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Climate change talks start and stop. Vague proposals are made. The earth is becoming warmer and like space around the earth, polluted. 
We pray for bold, practical commitments to tackle climate change and injustice as we re rebuild from the pandemic. Lord, we know still there will be much more to be done. We pray for leaders to build on decisions made, increasing their ambitions and turning talk into swift and long-lasting action. We pray for humility, compassion and collaboration in the months ahead as we look to the global climate change talks to be held later this year to lead to real and beneficial changes to our lifestyle and the health of the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Collect for today. God, our Creator, as we reflect on the misery of our fragile planet, we celebrate the wonders of our Earth as home. Help us to discern how we have polluted our planet and to empathise with the groaning of creation beneath us. Teach us to sense the presence of God pulsing through Earth as a living, green-blue sanctuary. Teach us to love Earth as our home. In the name of Christ, the Word of God, who is the creative impulse in all creation. Amen.
just at the end of our service this morning. Thank you very much for worshipping with us. It's always a joy to prepare these services for you. And my grateful thanks to Paul Hunt and everyone who has taken part in the service this morning. There's just a couple of notices. Pensioners Praise will be on the 6th of September at Christchurch at 2 p.m. Everyone is welcome to join us. You don't have to be retired. And if you would like to raise some funds for um, Christchurch Building Project by joining the John Barron Fun Walk, um, there are some sponsorship forms in the church. You can walk anywhere you like, two kilometres or five kilometres, at any time during September. All you need to do is pick up a form and get some sponsors. Every year we are given a bonus pot, um, depending on how much money we raise. And um, so extra money will be given to us by the John Barron Fun Walk um, over and above what you manage to raise. So it's a brilliant way to raise funds for the church. Please do join us for our coffee stop after the service if you would like to. The information will be on the screen at the end, or you can find it on our Facebook page. And so we come to our closing prayers. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.